Yes, everyone, that is Quasi Motard on the Chiquita Banana Riker 600 and me on his because we hang out with Quasi for the day. Thrill Mouse Moto Crew gets to ride on some sports bike. We get to ride on some scooters. I mean, his Quasi is like whole fleet of all of his really cool little scooting little bikes that he's got. And then the best part about it is he takes us to school, uh, Riker school. So we're talking quad locks, um, anything that holds a phone, a mirror. We talk uh, Madstat windshields. We talk throttle control, a uh, bunch of really cool tips. Like I said, this is the man here. If, if you've been to my channel, then you've been to his channel, and you know he's the truth, and he's got some cool info for us. So we just kind of throw it all on one little video. Uh, those mirrors are really sweet, and they are very handsome mirrors, as you can see there. And we talk about them shad bag. That's a big thing that I wanted to know about at this point of the video. And like I said, he takes us there. He's even stunting on us with those stage four Elkas. You know, some of us only got three. You know, and he's got the um, sway bar too. So we really don't miss a whole lot. But you know, we got to get there first. Throw mouse moto. So like I said, we got the crew. Just the kind of like half the crew. So we got Kevin with his Riker 900, if you're not familiar with the channel. We got Brian, a.k.a. Grandpa, on his Honda Shadow. I think it's like a 1200. And then me on the Riker 600. So we head out. Um, you know, we're in the Austin area. And we're going to Kitty, Texas to hang out with Quasi. Uh, he invited us over. He's got a bunch of cool stuff. Like I said, there's, there's no way you don't know him if you're here. Um, he's like the first one in Texas reportedly to have a Riker. So he was the one dropping all them cool videos we've all seen if you're a Riker owner. And there's my there's our first diss of the of the road trip. Anytime he's definitely too cool for us. But anytime we, we get him when uh you know, he wave disses when we're with Brian, I always blame Brian for it. I tell him it's because he's got a Honda Shadow. That's why. Um it's a pretty good excuse each time, especially if it's a a Harley owner that that does it but so we're just heading out uh, I don't show a whole lot of the trip just some some cool parts where and I know this is a long video I know you're like you don't show a lot of the trip because there's there's a lot and really the main part is us hanging out with quasi and him dropping that knowledge on us I, I was I cut a bunch of stuff out but there's still a bunch because it's really good stuff I mean I was like relearning everything um, from this trip just by watching it over again by editing so definitely wanted to hook it up for people that really want you know to know these things about the Rikers I mean this, this guy's full of knowledge about it and experience so uh, it was a windy trip as you can see in this video I'm kind of just all over the place on it so we joke around about that too <laughs> there it was like this I was like a bobblehead I was like ugh, ugh. But yeah, it, this was a fun trip. Like you say, the, it was actually kind of cool in this morning. So there's definitely layers and stages of us wearing clothes and, and then not anymore. Uh, I think I'm wearing shorts even at this. I'm doing my, my hybrid moto gear level right here at this point. Uh, but of course, we stop at Bucky's. It, it's still a cool trip anytime we're going you know, to the Houston area. I mean, it's not really that scenic. But it's pretty fun, especially when we're goofing around. Look at Kevin with his his Bucky's bag on his uh, flexing his Bucky bag on his Zerate shelf, which is always cool um, to see when we're behind him because it's so low pro, and it's a cool little storage thing that you really can't see. And you know, it's more of an aesthetic thing with Kevin in the in the Bucky's lunchbox, so it's real cool. And then uh, Grandpa just splitting his right there, and actually have some. Uh, some of the grandpa cam here it is right here i got the grandpa cam in there i have no idea how his camera does not have his exhaust in it because his exhaust is louder than my rls predator that i have on my riker and definitely louder than kevin's uh, stock one but yeah it's like a it's like a weird just like rattle he's just got like a good little protector on the mic i do not so i apologize for that again on this video i know i've been making that apology the last couple of them but i just i wasn't listening to the you know to the film and i didn't know i needed to put tape on it and i have it on there now so but then we see this 
G8 right here. And I go, how is that familiar? And that is Mo Nation. He's got a cool YouTube channel, uh, mostly based on his G8 and some car detailing. And he's de actually de detailed a motorcycle before, but that's him uh, Instagramming me uh, just there. And it's funny because I met him the day before in San Antonio. So what are the odds of that? But very unique uh, G8, so easy to spot. So that was um, real fun running into someone like that, especially another YouTuber and then one I met the day before. But the route we're taking to Houston, it's, it's like the same one you would take from San Antonio to go to Houston or anything like that. But you can see we're in Texas now at this point. And uh, we're getting close to hang out the closet. Because like I said, I, we got too much to show you. We got too much to show you. And it's actually like educational, cool stuff. And before anyone thinks anything, I'm telling you the next video that I do is going to be the part two of the New Mexico trip. So don't trip. The next part of the trip is coming out. I know everyone's waiting for it. The first one, it was pretty fun. So uh, I'm really stoked about editing the second one, but just trying to keep it all mixed up. And this was actually like the next day after it. So let's let uh, Quasi uh, catch us up on everything Riker. Did you Yo, lose Kevin? what's up? Did you lose Kevin? Yeah, I don't. Uh, his uh, his real time updates were saying he was still like an hour away. Or what? Forty minutes away. I don't, you can bring the bike up. Hey. You don't need to leave it on the street. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't want to block anything. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, my sister made those for me. My wife has got one of those little uh, cricket, uh, cricut, cut, mm. whatever you have for nothing. Yeah, this it's was something. a silhouette. I think it's yeah, the same, yeah, same thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I see you put the hand guards on. I was watching one of your uh, recent vids and. Uh, oh, thanks. You were putting the uh, the hand guards on, so yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, and uh, it makes they, a big difference. They already had right. these on it, uh -huh. so I was pretty. Uh, I was like, well, that's the look I'm going for. And then I've been riding with them, and it's like that's all I want on there, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I put those on mine, and I went ahead and did the light kit, but the light kit was like 150 bucks, and it's just aesthetics. It doesn't do anything for forward visibility. Or but anything. you were able to put the light kit and have these? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How does that work? Uh, it fits inside the void on the, uh, uh, the plastic, so it gives you a new little plastic thing here on the inner guard. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, well, nice. Because yeah. I like those. I saw it on the video, like, I don't know what makes the the Migos Rikers, Migos Rikers, uh -huh. but they have those on them, and that's when I saw it. I was like, what? I never did a nighttime shot of mine after I showed that, uh, you know, the upgrade video and all that. Uh -huh. I didn't feature that. I guess I probably could one of these days so people can see what they look like. But dude, these look way cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got that exoskeleton look because it kind of matches the herringbone pattern. On the oh, here. gotcha. So, yeah, those are the uh, CRT lanes. I was giving it a back. You just got back from a road trip, didn't you? Yeah, I just got back from a road trip on that little uh, road right there. Uh, did 2,000 miles on that. Oh. <laughs> I haven't had a time to get into that video yet to edit that, but I bought a turn signal adapter from S. Uh, what is it? Uh, Moto Dynamics, and it was wired backwards. So I had positive to negative on one of the outputs, and I think it fried this thing. Let me roll it over here. Uh, we'll move a chair real quick, and I'll roll oh, it out. Um, yeah. Look at that. Welcome to dog damage. It is like. <laughs> guard. I'm pretty sure when I pick my foot up, my the dog shoes. has been digging holes in my yard, <laughs> and that is. Uh, nah, dog I'm damage. actually trying to take it out. You're gonna be stuck in. You gotta let the bubbles now. come up first. <laughs> there we go. Oh no, we're gonna man. have to wash that. <laughs> I was not ready, dude. Dang it. Water, water is the first indication of trouble, but you don't know how deep it is. <laughs> Didn't even <laughs> turn around, don't. Turn. I missed the whole. I actually not. Yeah, trying to, yeah. trying to walk in even. Uh, the the grass. I missed oh, out. That sucks. Anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that. Off, it's all good. We'll yeah, let's do this. So yeah, this is the uh, Admore uh, light bar. This is not the one that has uh, the intelligent brake light, which is a deceleration light. It's uh, not funny. It, it has all the other functions, you know, progressive turn signals. And all that. Hell yes, it is. Pretty slick. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That thing is super duper bright. And it's uh, trippy on camera too. It's like all blinking. Yeah, it's probably flashing. Uh, it has a. An issue right now because of that Moto Dynamics uh, adapter that I had. I think it fried some of the circuitry. 
but uh, it might be stuck in brake option right now. Let's see. Did it go bright and flashy, flashy? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it gets stuck in the brake mode and it doesn't let go of brake mode. The frosted lens even cuts down on the yeah. brightness. And you can get this in uh, black matte. So and it's honestly, smoked. I think it's too big for the Raper. Uh, uh, no, it'll fit right under the tail, but I don't want it to get hit by the fender. Right. So I've been waiting to put mine on. Oh, so you have a, um, a separate one that you're thinking about putting on the right? I've got, it's the same model. You see, it's not doing the, the, the turn signal yeah. function right now because uh -huh. I got fried. Um, but it's got a progressive lens where it goes flash, flash, flash in a direction. So oh, these, like all the these turn, or whatever. Yeah, these turn amber. But you're saying you have a whole new one for the Riker. Right. So that yeah. one will do that on that one. Correct. It's the same model, but it's uh, the newer version that has the progressive, uh, or I'm uh, sorry, the intelligent brake light in it. So it has a decelerometer built into it. Oh, that's that's nice. The problem with the Riker is it decelerates really, really fast. As soon as you roll off the throttle, it's like hitting the brakes. Yeah. And you can exactly. decelerate from 70 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour, never touching the brakes in about, I don't know, what, six seconds? I know. Yeah. It, it's crazy. So people behind you, if you don't tap the brakes, they don't know you're slowing yeah. down. And I ran into that uh, when I was following Nick, uh, Fatty with a firearm. He was riding my Riker and I was behind him on his 600. The and STS thing people get is a, uh, they wired in the brake light pulled up on the frame on yes. the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing, but people are now having problems with it. Yeah, this is so much simpler because it's yeah. all built into this housing. That's but nice. when I was following behind Nick, uh, he was on my Riker, and he was slowing down on, like, on-ramps to the highway, and I was closing in on him real fast before I realized that he was slowing down. I was like, ooh, Riker needs a, you know, intelligent brake light. So, when anyway. you say um, decelerometer, so when you let off the throttle, you're saying some indication happens on the light here? It's like, it's like mercury sitting on a slide. So as soon as your bike goes like this, then right. mercury makes a contact right. and says, hey, we've got power here. Right, but instead of a mercury switch, yeah. it's a MEMS, which is a microelectronic mechanical sensor. Yeah. So uh, it, it's basically like the decelerometers that are built into your phone. And you can okay. set the sensitivity. So in other words, you can, uh, it's got a USB port on this guy. You can go and you can program the brake light functions, the decelerometer function, anything oh. you want to be as sensitive or not as sensitive as you need it to be. Okay. So as soon as you start rolling off the throttle, you never have to touch the brake and it'll flash just like it does yeah. right here. I was going to say, does it have so the option to like It does flash? that. It'll do that, that flashing indication to let people know behind you that you're slowing down even if you didn't touch the brake. Right. So, yeah. That's what happens when I'm following you. Right. Oh. I get right up on you because I didn't realize you were slowing down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost had to put my feet back on the ground to keep from falling over. I was coming up on you so fast. Oh, then yeah, that sounds pretty necessary. Like uh, but his Riker had a problem with the uh, wheel nuts, and he, we actually had a split wheel nut, so we couldn't ride his anymore. He could ride You're it. You're talking about that Here. same wheel nut that was part of the recall, the recall or whatever? Issue, yeah. yeah. And he knew about the recall right before we left for the trip. They didn't have any available, so he decided to take a chance on it. We hit a nasty pothole in Tulsa. Really? Popped the nut. Yeah, it was you got that on one of your videos already? Yep. Yep. Oh. Yeah, it's on the channel. I'll check it out. Yeah, I was doing I was doing some uh, camera on a pole -ish, uh, stuff uh, footage on uh -huh. that ride, and uh, I noticed when I was riding Pillion on the back of mine, Nick was driving. Uh, we're loaded up pretty heavy, you know, Nick's probably 230, something like that, mm -hmm. 220, uh, and I'm 160, 170 loaded up. We were, our, our static sag, our rider sag, sorry, not static sag, rider sag was sitting right here. So we were really, really low already, and then uh, under bumps and stuff, this was pretty much contacting the, the upper fender. Wow. So, that's why I stopped with you know putting my uh, Held off on light it. on there because if I put it here it's gonna oh, it's yeah. gonna interfere with the so, stock anything yeah right yeah. so the the bid that I put out I gave them the dimensions of this and I, I gave them some pictures of this little stub fender here and what I was gonna have made is a uh, aluminum extruded bracket or you know have something CNC machined out of billet aluminum whatever and put it on here and it would have a mount that's higher so essentially I could put my oh, yeah. brake light yeah. here behind okay. the uh, passenger seat because you know that's not going anywhere that's a fixed piece of the frame essentially it's part of my maintenance chores for this season i haven't gotten into it yet i've been busy but uh i'm going to be replacing the rear tire with a yokohama uh you can go to discount tire uh, i've got some of the links that another member of the oklahoma riker riders or sorry red dirt rikers uh he sent that and it shows the part number of the tire everything it's uh, a yokohama car tire 
so dark side <laughs> yeah. yeah supposedly uh, but it's the same rough tire as some of the older spider se5s use uh, and the problem with the Riker rally is it's a 15 inch versus the 16 inch with a non-rally so we've got very limited tire selection we've got to go to the automotive side to get it mm. uh, when I do that I'm also going to replace the half fender here because if you commute with the bike or if you ride adventure long distance touring like I do uh, you're going to go through puddles you know yeah. you can go through sprinkler puddles on the road it doesn't even need to be a rainstorm and the spray off of the rear tire comes right up here and hits your butt <laughs> yeah 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 you're going to get brown stripes and, and that's even with you having the max mount the back seat and everything yeah, like that yeah yeah exactly and before I even had the uh, passenger seat accessory uh, is one of the first few videos that I did I went for one of my first few fill-ups, and uh, I, I noted I had a bunch of brown spray in here, uh, you know, water overspray. It's coming through the max mount area, and this little false fender, uh, it's not even this piece, this yeah. is a separate inner fender. It, it manages to make it through here, and I was getting brown straps on my butt. Oh, no, dude. That's not cool. You know, and with a, a traditional motorcycle, the rear tire's a little further behind you, and you've got a fender that's going to prevent most of that. Unless you do a fender eliminator, and then you're going to get oversprayed. But that's another story. So when you do that conversion, you just you're basically just buying the same piece that we have on the um, 900. On the, the yeah, on the non rally. Non rally. Right. Yeah. So uh, the only tricky bit there is it requires rear wheel removal. You can't do it with the rear wheel on. Which is something you were going to be doing anyway. I'm going to be so, doing anyway. Yeah. So I just want to do it all at once and save myself some hassle. Uh, I don't know if you can zoom in here, but you can yeah. see on the swing arm housing, there are rivets right here. Mm -hmm. So those rivets have to be drilled out, and this little stub uh, splash guard here has to be removed. And then the full rear fender covers all of this, and you rivet it into that spot. Gotcha. So I, I don't remember the numbers, so don't quote me on it, but it's, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks, something like that, for a full fender from Cheap Cycle Parts or one of the online resellers. And uh, you just take apart this rear housing area, you pull this stub out, you pull this stub out, and you just rivet the new one in. Yeah, that's good because that's the main thing I wanted to hear is like the yeah. full on benefit of having that. And if there was anyone out there put in the rally, you know, through full everything and the way you travel and everything, it's everywhere. you. So that, if anyone knows the benefit yeah. of that, is this guy for sure. So. Yeah, and so many people don't ride their bikes in the rain or they say you know well you shouldn't have them out in the rain and this and that i ride my bikes 365 yeah, yeah. 24 7 365 i go everywhere it doesn't matter if it's raining snowing icing it doesn't care uh so yeah you gotta be prepared for those eventualities and yeah uh, if you're dealing with commuting in my case where something like this is a functional problem and it causes overspray oh, obviously yeah. it, it looks bad when i walk into a customer site and i got mud all over my back I do everything from commuting to adventure riding to moto camping to cross country trips. So, what's that, Barry? You're starting a new trend. One uh -huh. shoe, one shoe, one shoe. I, one shoe. I, what? I push my I push my bikes into all kinds of roles that they may or may not be designed for. And you know, if I find a problem where it doesn't work, I'll point it out. Okay, so this is a rally, and it's uh, you said you were the first one to purchase one reportedly, in the state of texas reportedly i'm the first owner in texas because when i tried to title this thing they didn't know what it was i had a two hour ordeal trying to get it titled mm -hmm. and uh geico didn't even have the classification in their system so it was a trick <laughs> to get it uh to get it registered insured all that so as the reportedly first riker riker rally in texas what all have you done on this bad boy here? Okay, that's a good question. So first thing I did before any other uh, hacks or additions or whatever, um, because I commute, I go long distances all the time. This is number one right here, the throttle hack. Uh, and that video is out there for anybody that needs the details on it. But, for sure. Uh, the Go Cruise throttle lock, it's a seven eighths inch version. Uh, it's only 18 or 20 bucks on Amazon. And then the Riker doesn't have a front brake lever like most motorcycles, so it has this hand guard. You just need a little bit of an extension so the cruise control can stop against that. 
So I just put a little bit of heater hose on there, and whammo, you got a cruise control. Done. Nice. Less than 20 bucks. Yeah. Less than 20 bucks. Because, like, the Atlas and stuff is like 80 bucks oh, yeah, plus yeah. everything. You get into those uh, friction locks, uh -huh. and they can run you upwards of anywhere from $50 to 180 bucks. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. But I'll show you a mistake. Okay. Anybody that does okay. This, here's a mistake. Don't do this. I'm like, why am I walking like, uh, You're lopsided, I'm man, like, where you, 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 yeah. you got a flat tire. Uh, the Kyoko yes. throttle lock. This thing, in my opinion, is a mistake. By the time I got this end mount and the Kyoko, it was 180 bucks. Right. It won't work for the Riker There's because no of the way the, the, the throttle tube is set up. It doesn't work right. Um, so this thing, while it's fancy and it's neat and it integrates, it's real smooth. It's a pain in the ass to use because to set this, you need to get tension just right where the engagement point is. And then as you're rolling the throttle on, you reach over with your little finger and you lock it. Oh, that's craziness. Yeah. You think it works and that's all fine and dandy. You're cruising along, but then you get into slow traffic. Okay, what do you need to do in slow traffic? You okay. need to roll on, you need to make a pass or whatever. Well, it just set itself at that speed. Well, you, you can see it rolling oh, down. Oh yeah, it's creeping, dude. Yeah. Once you move the throttle, it no longer holds the setting. It either locks in that higher position or it releases completely yeah, done, yeah. and you're screwed. The uh, Go Cruise, on the other hand, allows you to roll on and that lever, it's just a friction There's piece right here. All you do is just let go of it and it'll return to the previous setting you had. So much easier to use. And it's 20 bucks versus 160 plus. So okay, cool. for any non-rally owners, you need to have a handguard assembly. You don't have to have the front uh, guard protector, mm -hmm. but you need to at least have the aluminum frame here because it acts as your stopper. We don't have a front brake lever like a traditional motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you roll this on, you get to the throttle or the speed setting you want, and you just push this down with your finger, and now that throttle is locked in that position, that speed, whatever. And if you want to roll it off, you just forcefully close yeah, the yeah. throttle. But if you're cruising along highway speeds, you got it set, you know, three quarter throttle, whatever it is, and you want to roll on to pass somebody. You roll it on. You got that much extra throttle. When you're done passing that person, you get back in the right lane, let go. It goes right back where it was. Yeah. So it's not that release and tension nonsense that the Kyoko induces. Nice. So, uh, so the add-ons that I did. The first one was the throttle lock. Mm -hmm. uh, second one immediately was uh, one of the Can-Am phone mounts that you can buy uh, from their site. And this is reasonably important for the Riker's case because if you use a, a universal like a U-clamp mount, you can pinch these cables right here. I don't know if you can get that on camera. But oh, yeah. the, the cables on the back of the bar uh, have, you know, this profile. Mm -hmm. So what the can -Am mount does is it's got a, a little relief right here in the mount that allows for space for that cable. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, So I already had a bunch of X-mounts, uh, Ram X-mounts. I didn't really need them, but I bought two of these guys uh, just so I could have that manufacturer-specific relief in this thing. And they're 70 bucks or whatever each. Um, yeah, because so, I have a Ram mount, and I had to make sure it cleared that. Yes. So that's what's cool about this. Exactly. Because it's the, the universal Ram mounts, that U-clamp that they have, is going to smash your cables. Mm -hmm. So you've either got to go over here, it, which yeah. is behind it, and that mm -hmm. kind of puts it way off to the side. Yeah. Uh, or you can just get these. And then this gives you your uh, one-inch Ram ball, which is you know a pretty universal mount for everybody. So this mount came with the ball on the, it? Yeah. The, so the, the BRP kit came with this mount and uh, a little short arm extension and the X grip. Nice. Uh, I've stopped using the X grips just recently because of some issues I've had and we can go into that later. On but other bikes or on this one here? Uh, on all of them. Oh yeah, you did switch to this I one lost, here, huh? Yeah. The quad lost, lock or whatever? Yeah, I lost my phone a couple times and oh, I decided wow. I'm going back to quad lock. Uh, uh, I have a video that I never posted where my phone was mounted over here. Uh, and I hit a really bad pothole on the Riker and it, it caused the bars to jerk suddenly and my phone bounced way up here and then uh, <laughs> dropped and the only thing holding it was the charging cable and I caught it real quick. Traffic, <laughs> and I was like, Ninja! <laughs> and so, that was the X mount. That was the X mount, the Ram X mount. Wow. I, and I love those things. I've used them for years on all kinds of bikes and I've never had problems with them but uh, with these, uh, with the Rikers, there's no power assist steering and there's a lot of inertia and force mm -hmm. that gets transferred through to the bars uh, when you hit a, a bump on one side or you know, generally it's one side. Both sides, the whole bike goes up. When it's one side, you get a yaw effect 
and it jacks your bars and uh, your phone can go flying. So wow. anyway, the RAM mount prevents, or I'm sorry, the uh, quad lock prevents that because you've got this uh, mm -hmm. locking mechanism in the back of the case itself. And uh, when it's engaged on there, it can't come off. And you never had a problem trying to get that case for your model phone or anything no, like that? No, no, for all the popular phones anyway. If you've got some of the Google Pixels and some of that, yeah. that real popular, I don't think they make one for those Lenovo phablet yeah, and all it, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like that. So if you've got uh, some of the non-mainstream phones, you could have issues. But uh, for the Samsungs, the Apple iPhones, any of that. Hell yeah, dude. They got mounts. Yeah, so then the next uh, piece I put on uh, was the factory BRP. Uh, windscreen didn't like it much it worked okay and it was better than not having anything at all but uh, I ended up buying this uh, Madstad engineering screen this is the 18 inch uh, probably should have gone for the 20 inch did you sell that original one or you still have I gave it to Nick uh, fatty with a firearm became the uh, lucky recipient blind he didn't know he was getting it I gotcha. just shipped it to him and he went what the <laughs> <laughs> nice. I said here you go put it on have that for our next road trip uh, so the BRP windscreen is okay, but it has a taper right here and you end up with a lot of dirty uh, air uh, overspill from okay. the sides of the screen. The Madstad fixes all that. These are fantastic screens. I love these things. So even though the Rally comes with an OEM windscreen... No, yours... it doesn't come with a windscreen. Oh, it does not. It, it comes with a fly screen or a deflector. So it's just a little uh, stubby black piece oh, of plastic. Oh, I've right seen that. It fits yeah, on the front yeah, of yeah. the gauge cluster. It's not big. It's only about this big. Mm -hmm. And it, it helps a little bit uh, with breaking up wind flow in your chest, but it's not going to deflect air. It's not really going to do much for you. Uh, so I wasn't really a fan of the BRP screen because uh, a lot of its mounting grommets and plastic pieces were cracking already after only six months oh, of use. Oh, wow. Dude. I took it off, and I showed that, I think, in one of the videos. But um, yeah, the BRP screen leaves a lot to be desired. So, nice. Uh, and you Mads, said this Madstad, is the what uh, dimension one? This is Madstad 18-inch light 18-inch light uh, smoke. I don't do dark screens because at night... It kind of looks clear. I'd be down with light smoke. It does until you're behind it uh, on the road or on camera, and you can see that there's a uh, uh, a little bit of a tent. Oh, yeah, when you compare it there like that. Nice. Yeah, there's a little bit of a tent. It's very, very light. And then you got the little... Yeah, now this, uh, this has been one of the biggest hits on the channel. Uh, everybody that sees this in the videos asks questions. Uh, you can get the name right there. It's the Rider Scan Blind Spot Mirror. Nice. Uh, and there was a company in the UK that owned it for a long time called Hunter Create. And they went out of business or decided to sell this off to another group, which is uh, sporttour.co.uk or something like that. Uh, and they own it now. But uh, it's like 50 or 60 bucks. I like how you you were able just to adjust it like that, You can that adjust too. it. Yeah, yeah. And in this case, I don't have it real tight because I need to be able to reach my adjustment screws for the Madstead. Uh, Sweet. We should show that, I guess. So uh, when you take this off, this goes off with it? Correct. It's okay. attached to the screen. Gotcha. So we can show that if you... Yeah, it's more editing, sorry. but <laughs> No, that's cool. Dude, I'm telling you. This is uh, right here. The, uh, the Madstad is adjustable for height and rake, so it tilts front back. Mm -hmm. So you just loosen up the screws, and then you can slide it up and go... You just do that by hand, protection. no right. tools, no nothing. So in town, when I need more airflow or if it's really hot outside, drop it. If nice. I want to go naked, that's the next neat trick. Uh, they've got these little quick release levers you can see in here. Mm -hmm. You pull this out, rotate it away. There's another one on the other side just like it. And then the whole screen comes right off. Gone. I can get it off. Gone. So it had. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, you had to tighten. I didn't, down I didn't have this one tightened them. down. Yeah, that's why I was fighting it. with me. So it's got these angled uh, spools right here, and it fits right on there. So if you want to go naked, just pull it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally a three-second thing. You just grab these little. Uh, they look like cigar cutters. <laughs> that's what I. Call oh yeah, it does, isn't yeah. it? So anyway, you just pop those little uh, locks loose and pull your screen right off, and you can ride naked. Nice. See, I like that because obviously that's what I like and I like the look of mine, yeah. but I'm not gonna lie, when we went to New Mexico, dude, and the desert, and when it gets nighttime, I'm telling you, I'm wearing like these swim chunks, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it goes, boom, it's cold. Yep. And I'm like, <laughs> Well, even, even when you go through bug storms at dusk, mm -hmm. uh, when it, you know, low light at night, you will go through just 
millions of insects it's unbelievable yeah. and if you don't have some kind of a windscreen your visor gets clogged up with crap oh yeah well that's what it's mine looks like right now yeah it's a safety issue so it's comfort, safety, you name it. Yeah, being but, able to pop it off yeah, like that, yeah, zip yeah. around town, exactly, take it off, exactly. that's cool. But yeah, for the long run. And this is all you're left with when you pop it off. You've got these two uh, oh, aluminum yeah. blocks and you've got the spools on there. That's it. I like still that. still naked. They're making them black now. So nice. Cool. Yeah, that's what Kevin was saying because he's got the same setup. So yeah, I guess yeah, you he's both got the, got the original like What is yours, a 20 or 22? 22. 22. Just in case I have a back passenger. There you go. Like yeah, that. and and in my uh, my Matt said opinions or review interview or uh, video I was trying to give. Uh, that's one thing that I noted is even at the high position, it's just below my eye line, which is a safety thing. You don't want to look through a windscreen. You want to look over it. 18, 22. Yeah. 18. 18. Uh, at the highest position, it's just right for me, barely. Mm -hmm. When I add the Airhawk seat. Uh, it raises me up. Oh, a bit. yeah, yeah. And I, it's not quite as tall as I would like it to be. Uh, but if I have somebody sitting back here pillion, their head is three or four inches taller than me. So the screen isn't really doing them any good. The taller screen that Kevin's got on his, that 22. Works. So that's something you, you think you might convert to? Or? Yeah. Uh, in fact, I was waiting for this one to get beat up, and I've already got one little scratch on it, so that gives me an excuse. Oh, there you go. I'll, prob up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably get the 20 now, just to go up another couple inches. Because but, when you shove it all the way down to its lowest setting, it's still pretty low. Mm -hmm. So Now, but, you, but you'll keep all the hardware, or how does that work? Um, yes. So Madstad will sell you just the... Uh, acrylic or plexiglass, whatever it okay. is, the screen, and you just unscrew these four screws right here, pop the plastic off, and reattach a new one. So if someone so the mounts themselves are staying in. Place. Oh yeah, nice. So if someone was kind of on the fence about what size and dimension that would be right for them, it wouldn't yeah. be too bad to trip out about because go it's not up, like you have to rebuy the whole interval. thing. And Madstad has a calculator on their site uh, that lets you estimate your height above the steering stem here to your eyeball height above steering stem and then they convert that to the size of the screen and i was between the 18 and 20 and i opted for the 18. don't do that go up okay go, go that's up a good next, tip go pro tip next, pro tip yeah. uh, right after that i put on the uh the handguard uh deflectors and the lighting kit the lighting kit don't waste your money yeah uh, they they look interesting at night we can't see it in the daytime here when we turn and they're on. white right they're white yeah uh, but they're not very bright and they don't have a turn signal function so that'd be tight if they had a turn signal function though dude they don't have a turn signal function so really they're just they're a little bit of extra forward conspicuity but okay not really worth the money they were 150 bucks don't waste your money that's a lot of money for something that doesn't you money. know what i mean don't waste your money. <laughs> So uh, I put those on, and then immediately after that was the uh, uh, the thing that you like. Yes, man. These are the CRG lane splitters. I love these things. These are the greatest mirrors invented, in my opinion. Uh, they fold in. So I didn't got, even know they did that just yeah, now. That if you've got so a cool. sport bike or a congested garage like I always do, uh, it's a nice thing to be able to fold the mirrors in. Now, obviously, with the Riker, you know, your front wheel is sitting out way wider yeah, than these, so this, this function isn't really needed in the Riker's case. But uh, these are the EXO uh, lane splitters, so it has this kind of exoskeleton look, uh, that extruded aluminum. And I like it because it kind of matches the, the square herringbone pattern on the... Uh, the knee pads and kind of the plastic pattern that's on the side of the Riker. So, yeah, yeah, it's only a couple dollars extra for the uh, the herringbone. Dude, so, they stand out. Yeah. I don't, I don't see anybody with them. Not like I see a lot of Rikers, but I like how all of it looks quality yeah. and it's all metallic yeah, and it's not uh, minus plastic. Minus rusting in uh, the screw there, but I'll take care of that. Yeah, but these are Rikers. We're using yeah, yeah. a little bit of rust yeah. on there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, show that Yeah, nonsense. we're, we're using a little bit yeah, of that the, rust, the rusty hubs, man. What? That's annoying. So, yeah. These things, uh, they're about 68 to $70 each. So they're not cheap, but they're great mirrors. Uh, and then you need to buy the bar end adapters, which are another, you know, 15 or 20 bucks each. Uh, but the, the, the really good thing is the panoramic view that they give you. Uh, it's a, a convex lens. Oh, there. I just noticed that and just it's now. it's super wide field of view. It's much better than even the factory mirrors. So when you're seated in riding position, you can see way off to the sides. Much wider field of view than you can get with factory mirrors. Well, and that's they worth don't the money right vibrate. there. They don't vibrate like the factory mirrors. The factory mirrors have that longer extension oh, yeah. right here. So they're sitting there... Blah, 
Okay, that's me. Down. I'm like, is that yeah, a cop or yeah, is that an SUV? Bad. What is that behind me? Please it's fuzzy. Vibrate. Take mine for a ride in a little bit, and you'll see these are just rock solid. They don't vibrate at all. Super clear. I'm sold. I'm crystal, ordering them. Yeah, I'm ordering them tonight. Clear. Sold. You'll see them on the Thrill Mile of 600 Chiquita Banana soon. Mr. One Shoe Man. Mr. One <laughs> Shoe Man. That is crazy, dude. Did the uh, the the factory uh, tank bag? Oh yeah. Uh, I did the the review video and all that. Well, that was a hard sell for even me because you're talking about what a hundred dollars. It's not cheap, and I've got plenty of reservations in several of my videos. Oh yeah. Uh, it pisses me off because the thing will flip open. So yeah, the uh, the BRP tank bag. It, it's great with this custom uh, bra that it has here, and the magnetic attachment is super good. I love that. But the fail is the little side catches. I'll have to go get mine out of the garage and show you in a minute. But what happens, and it, it, you can see it in several of my videos, where I'm riding along, and suddenly the thing flips up in my face, and it covers the camera. Uh, it, the little, they're like purse catch magnets. They're not real strong. And under vacuum, or if you have it fully loaded and it's kind of puffed up, uh, they'll pop open all by themselves while you're riding and they flip up right in your face and it's really really annoying and mm -hmm. all the stuff that you have that's loose in the pocket you gotta watch out yeah. vacuumed out yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I wanted that uh -huh. seat too late have you been able to fit a phone in that actual no. plastic part yeah no. I know it's like no, whose phone that, that dude window is useless useless uh, it doesn't work for any modern phones even this uh, s10 plus won't fit in there no with the case on it uh, so the only thing I've used that little front window for is uh, camping passes, parking passes. Oh, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or if I want to print directions for where I'm going, like a roll chart map or something yeah, like that, that I'll print it and I can look down at that and then I don't need to rely on the GPS or the phone. Uh, but yeah, so the, the factory tank bag, mm -hmm. it needs some work. Uh, now, the factory tail bag that BRP was selling was a fail. Uh, I gave factory that away. tail bag. Yeah, yeah. They had a little tail bag that was actually adapted from the watercraft. Uh, and it, it doesn't work. The, the top is too narrow. You can't fit anything in it. I've got a really small ultra loop laptop. You couldn't even get that thing in the lid. Wouldn't fit. And it mounted on the uh, max it mount? It right on the max mount. Yeah, I don't have it anymore, so I can't show it. It's all good. But uh, I, I used it for a little while, and it made an excellent backrest. It was the best backrest in the world. You could lean back against it at stoplights, and that was its best function. But for 200 bucks? No, yeah, $200 backrest. Yeah. Fail. Two thumbs down. Well, that's so what I want to know. I yeah, I gave it away to another Riker owner. What's that? Is this a, is this a oh yeah, those, those are the uh, knee pads. Those are the knee pads. Okay. We're getting to that, Kevin. Yeah. Now I, I just noticed it. I'm sorry. I just I just added the knee pads lately. Uh, I had them for a year and a half, and I just never put mm -hmm. them on. But right before my Twisted Sisters ride with Nick. I knew that we were going to be doing a lot of carving and, you know, cornering and stuff like that. So I decided, hey, I'm going to go ahead and install these guys. They're real simple. I didn't know they were that thick. That's yeah. why I was... It only takes about, you know, 10 minutes to put them on. You just need to clean the surface with alcohol yeah. uh, on the plastic here. And then they've got a couple of little tabs. You won't be able to get it on camera, but they, they wrap around and it's little one-way uh, tension clips that okay. you push on and it holds the, the rubber on there. Uh, but I actually like them. They work really well. I don't know if they're worth a hundred bucks, but they work well. So when you're cornering uh, and you're gripping the, it's not the tank, but we'll call it the tunnel. When you're gripping the tunnel with your knees, your knees don't get beat up by hard plastic. Okay. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah, well, and, and like what Kevin was saying, it does cover up the discoloring that you might get it from does. that too. Yeah, and the, the plastics, you know, it's ABS plastic all over the Riker, so you get sun fade, you get that chalky appearance, and... Yeah, there's not a lot you can do about that uh, other than, you know, like Mothers or Meguiar's Back to Black, so stuff like that. It helps, but it's plastic. It's what good. is it you use? Mothers? Back to Black? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just bought some, but I haven't yeah. used it yet. It works, no. but it's still just covering the problem. If you want to get rid of it, heat gun. Heat gun? Heat gun. And that just makes it black again? or What, what happens is the top uh, few micrometers of plastic you know just the, the very very surface of plastic okay. dries out and that's what gets chalky so the oils uh, from the the abs dry out okay. and that's what gives it that white appearance if you go over it with a heat gun gently uh, it remelts it essentially and brings up all the oils and blends it out 
Wow, did not know that. Yep. That's a pro tip yeah, for sure. Yeah, go to, uh, go to YouTube and look for uh, door panel restoral or something like that, or ABS heat gun. That's okay. all you have to search, and you'll find all kinds of tutorials on how to use a heat gun to gently bring back uh, color and vibrance plastic without chemicals. Nice. Pretty cool. You know, I added the passenger seat accessory in the foot pegs, and then the, uh, the pannier mount on the side. Uh, we can show that. Let me grab the pannier. Sure. So I showed this a long time ago on a product uh, review for all the accessories on the Riker. Mm -hmm. uh, I already owned a set of these bags for my CB500X and FC6R that I have. Uh, this is the Shad 3P system, so you got a pair of these guys. But uh, K&M decided to make a mount that fits the 3P system, and when you buy this from K&M or BRP, uh, it I don't remember if it has the Shad logo on it or not, but you're just buying the right bag instead of a pair of them. I've only seen it with yeah. Shad like so, that. This mount is like a hundred bucks. It's really not bad. If you're already on the bags, then you can switch it from another bike. Uh, and this is the one piece of engineering <laughs> from Can-Am that I'll say they did right. Uh -huh. it, it was so easy to put on. It works really well. Uh, they had thread lock paste on all the, the bolts. So it went on in five minutes. It was zero nice. trouble. And to put the bag on, it is just so stinking simple. If I can get on access with it instead of the top. That's it, done. The bag's on, game on, done. Wow. Uh, and the bag, a lot of people have a problem with the asymmetric nature of it. You don't have two of them, and it looks funny because it's lopsided, because you got a bag on one side and no bag on the other. But what are you going to do if you're touring? You know, you need yeah. to carry rain gear, you need to carry stuff with you, and you don't have a tail bag. Well, there you go. Well, I always consider these type of things just for more of the purpose and how it's supposed to look. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And it's super functional. They're water, very, very water resistant. I won't call them waterproof because if I go through heavy downpours, occasionally I have a little bit of water in the bag, but it's just drops. You know, it's nothing, no big yeah. deal. It doesn't soak your stuff inside because it has a rubber seal here and then, uh, you know, a labyrinth design. So it, it keeps most of the crap out of there. And you can fit a full helmet with full a helmet GoPro with mount and everything on Not there. Not with a GoPro mount. Ah. No, a GoPro mount. With my big monkey face uh, yeah, that I've got on there, it doesn't fit. Uh, but most full face lids uh, will fit in there without problem. Nice. With room to spare. Yeah. But when you do all your trips, you have it. You don't just have that. You got all kinds of. I have all kinds of crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a pack rat. I take everything with me. Anyway, so yeah, the next uh, star of the show as far as additions are the uh, Elka Stage Four, and that is thanks to Kevin over there hiding behind my bike. Uh, behind the 500x oh yeah, yeah, yeah so it gets his yeah. one minute to shine and you can't see him behind the yeah, bike yeah, yeah. kevin where so, are you so show your kevin, kevin show yeah. show yourself kevin i'm yeah. trying to <laughs> i heard my name what yeah so he's giving kevin, you credit for the kevin and tom had turned me on to the elkas because i was looking at a few different companies out there there was an m2 or yeah. something like that that i looked at uh but i rode uh kevin and tom's rikers uh, and I was sold on the Elkis, just done. Take my money, shut up, take my money. Uh, so I put in the order for these uh, Elkis Stage 4s. I put in the fronts, but I have not put in the rear yet, uh, just because it involves jacking up the bike and tearing apart more of it. Uh, it's about so, a three hour job if you've never done it before, and you obviously have done stuff, so I would say an yeah, hour and a half. I'm sure I can do it in an hour, hour and a half, but I'm waiting until I get the rear fender, right. uh, and I'm gonna do the rear tire at the same time, so just. Uh, oh yeah. I don't wanna tear it apart two or three times, I'll just do it once but these things make a huge difference. Uh, stiffer sway bar on the front end is definitely needed in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't know why BRP sold the Riker with such a, a weak sway bar because under single wheel uh, incidents where you've got a pothole or a ripple or something like that, you, you get an induced hop on one wheel only and it creates a yaw effect in the handlebars that's really, really hard to manage. Uh, a stiffer sway bar minimizes that a lot without increasing spring rates. So it keeps the... Uh, the wheel hop down uh, considerably so the one of the first mods that i did to this bike was the uh, brp sway bar and it's like 30 percent stiffer uh, it's not a baja ron uh, sway bar or anything and it it still has the factory end links in here but it made a huge difference in cornering and a huge difference in straight line stability on the highway when you get into ripples uh, here in Houston, we've got all those little reflectors that yeah. are lane markers. And when you touch those, when you're changing lanes, the front of this thing, I think I have it on video a few times, the front of it would set up this violent, vicious jackhammering. 
and the front end is just uh, yeah I'm, I'm yep. all over I'm, I'm a lane and a half wide and people are honking at me and <laughs> definitely get your end links because those stretch yeah 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 mm -hmm. so uh, that's going to be the next thing i put on is the end links but the brp sway bar or a stiffer sway bar whether it's baja ron or another brand uh, recommend it makes a huge nice. difference in cornering you can go around the corners now with this and uh the traction nanny doesn't fire and slow you down and yeah you know start you know complaining one of the biggest proponents coming back from that huge trip and then putting shots on oh yeah like, so like you know oh, yeah, yeah, you're new riding for hours there. and hours yeah. we took like a two-hour nap and rode from hours and hours and hours yeah. then i went to his place the next day we put um i don't have the, the super cool fours but i put those threes on there uh -huh. and uh and, and then we the drove weeks. yeah and then we drove to san antonio weeks. And it was like I was hitting stuff that normally would have like threw my hands like yeah. off the handlebars, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. You hit you hit a pothole, and it, it's just a miracle that you can maintain control <laughs> yeah. of the bike because blam! I mean, suddenly everything is just yeah not where it was a tenth of a second ago. So yeah, I would say I'd have like a pretty valid review on that because I just came from like a long trip off of stock everything, you know. And then I put those on, and it's like a cloud now. And well, I got the clearance because, like, we were talking about. Right, it clearance. raised you up a bit, yeah, yeah, because the front of the Rikers is very, very low. Now, which bar do you still have on here? That's the stock bar. The stock bar yeah. with the aftermarket. But image. after what you said, it's like, man, if it really is yeah. that crazy. Yeah, you got to go with a stiffer bar. Like I said, the man knows his stuff. Whatever you're interested in, Riker, you have to check out. Quasi Motard's channel. The info is going to be in the description, the details, everything you need to know. I'll probably pop it at the bottom right there again if I haven't already throughout the video. Check them out. That's just brief stuff he was sharing with us and you guys. So find the real stuff on his channel. Cool videos on pretty much everything that he mentioned. But let's go check out Quasi's bikes. We can just head over to my warehouse and uh, do whatever else. I don't know. Hell yeah. Let's do that. Yeah! Well, as you can tell, we're all pretty stoked to go out there. And, uh, of course, we are, because we, we, you know, we've never ridden any of Quasi's cool stuff that we see on his channel all the time. But what makes it cool is, is Quasi's actually pretty stoked that we're going out there, you know, and they're his bikes, you know. So, but that's just what kind of dude he is. He's cool. Um, he's stoked to see other people stoked. He likes giving people knowledge, experience, things like that. Um, so, it, of course, we're gonna have a bunch of fun. So this is this is the highlight of the tape. Other than, you know, getting that cool walk around his uh, famous uh, Riker rally there. So heading out to the warehouse, we're gonna ride some scooters, uh, sports bike, and there is way more stuff in there. See, we're having for the, he's stoked for us, man. I mean, he's got go-karts, doom buggies, all kinds of wild stuff in there. So I'm glad uh, we can share it on the channel with you guys. Your bike tracks so much straighter than mine does. I noticed because I was doing the, the swaying. Especially like, back there on the groove pavement. Yours is just tracking straight. It, it moves a tiny bit. Mine, you've got to fight the hell out of it. Yeah, just I, to maintain I noticed. It's still, still, why, still. Why do you think that is? I want, I, want to, I want to steal the front end of your bike and put it on. <laughs> How about the vibration? Do you think most of it's gone? I, I think it's gone. I didn't feel that uh, hop that used to be there around 60, 65. Yeah. It's gone. It's yeah. night and day it's great. for those side mirrors. Those mirrors? Yeah. Just because they don't shave. Yeah, yours. I kept looking at them and they're doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I just want to know if that's a cop or what that guy is behind me. And if it's shaking too bad, I can't tell. Oh, yeah. Side by side. Mine look like trash, dude. My mirrors. Oh, yeah. You see how those are like convex uh, or whatever? Yeah. 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 And yep. And they show more. Like that looks like you're looking at your face in the mirror. When I look right here, it's my whole entire body. Yeah, see? Which is how they should make these mirrors anyway. Yeah, there's a. There's a lot of that. Oh yeah, I see everything, dude. Oh, I need these. So these are the two scoots that Adrian and I rode up to uh, Arkansas back on Memorial Day. Uh, you know, just little 150cc scooters. We rode them 1,600 and some miles all the way up to Arkansas and back. So and how fast do these go? They do 65, almost 70. Nice. So we just take back highway. 
Uh, this is the channel's namesake right here, Quasi Motard. Uh, I got this thing many, many years ago, and I decided uh, to take the knobbies off of it and put street tires on here. So, almost a Motard, you know, Motard bikes or street bikes on dirt, you know, street tires on dirt bikes. So, Quasi almost Motard, Quasi Motard. So, that's right? where it all began. Yeah, that's where it started. <laughs> And this is my uh, little CD120, or I'm sorry, CL175 Scrambler yeah. uh, that I'm going to do a cross country trip on sometime next year. Uh, and that boy back there. Uh, dune buggy, got the little C3, got tons of computer gear that I store for my customers. And, yeah, it's a mess in here. Where have you taken that uh, buggy? The buggy, uh, just, you know, trails, OHD trails and stuff, Sam Houston Forest, things like that. Nice. Well, uh, C3 has done some road time, but not any really long trips. I've done 300 mile trip on that thing, 400 mile almost. Uh, on know. that silver on that scooter right C3, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 50 cc man, 40 miles an hour. Dang, dude. It's fun. So you're just taking like whatever back roads and yeah, things. Yeah, you just stay off the main highways. Back roads, you can do just fine. Scoot over for the fast traffic, let them go by. All right, I found my ride. I'm ready to go. Okay. Right. Yeah, that does. All right. That does you fit you, you Kev. <laughs> Uh, this one I've had for years. I used this one uh, for a number of years. I've taken this one across country twice. Uh, I've been, I think the, the longest, furthest trip I took on that one was up to uh, Minnesota. Uh, but it's gone, Minnesota. It's yeah. gone across the country a few times. Uh, it's got a flat battery in it right now. I need to put a new rear tire on it and clean up the CVT just a tiny bit and run it. Take it back out on the road. It hasn't seen any road time in over a year, well, almost two years now. Oh yeah, when you got all these other babies. Uh, and then the Yamaha. Uh, FC6, I got this as a birthday present to me three years ago, four years ago, how old am I? Four years ago. Um, great bike. I found a guy up in uh, Kansas City, Missouri that had this. It only had 2,800 miles on it. Still a brand new bike pretty much. Uh, he lived out in the middle of nowhere, so he didn't know how to sell it, who to sell it to, and he put it on Craigslist for 3000 bucks. It's a $7,000 bike, and uh, I called him and I said, is the ad real? He said, yeah. I said, are you going to hang on to it if I say I'm coming to get it? And he said, yeah. All right, I'm driving up there to get it. He didn't believe me. I rented a car, I drove up there, and you know we had a scheduled meeting time and place. I had already dropped off the rental car and walked a mile or two over <laughs> to the meeting place. And uh, he got it out of the truck, and he was saying, you know, if you're not sure if you want to get it, and I was like, dude, you don't understand. That's my ride home. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, we did the deal. I took the bike, and I rode it all the way back in one shot from northern Missouri. So you're just coming up on these deals, or are you just, like, really keeping your I'm ear to the ground, I'm a sucker dude? for the deal, man. If I find a deal, if I find a cheap deal on a bike, I get it. I try to avoid paying retail. Let, let me just start off. You should feel honored and privileged <laughs> because you are getting to ride a bike that's covered with Arkansas bugs. Oh, <laughs> this thing has, actual this Arkansas thing has, this artifact. Thing has, yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it hasn't had a bath since the Arkansas trip. <laughs> no, because it's you can fall on it's this brakes one. on the top. Because it's brakes up top instead of brakes on the foot. You put the side stand down and it kills I'll wait for push, Kevin and Gal. Oh, nice. <laughs> Kevin's too fast, too furious.
Dude, turning is weird. Can't do it. I can't turn sharp. Yeah. Turning is weird for me. Well, it should be. You gotta lean into it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, see, I'm not used to that. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Turning is weird, is it not weird? So is it like a motorcycle? Oh. Okay. I get it. Yeah, these things actually have great cornering uh, ability. It's insane. We were railing them through the mountain trails in uh, Arkansas, and we were banking them way over. I was wondering if I was going to start dragging the exhaust. I was like, wow, we are cornering the shit out of these things. I yeah. I'm going up to the car. It's like, I'm like, is he going to hit the car? No, I didn't hit nothing. I knew you were. But I was expecting to turn already. <laughs> you were hesitant to lean into it. Yeah, I was all like, I'll just slow down because I don't know. What is it going to do? Yeah. You videoed your scooter rides? Hell yeah, dude. Yesterday we were talking to Paul. Dude, it's like a bike rally and it's it's just Quasimotard's bike. And they run, dude. And they run. <laughs> And they run. Yeah, they're right. There's the people. I got like four this and five of this or whatever. He, he's actually starting them up and we're driving them around. Like, huh? <laughs> Brian's the experienced motorcyclist here. Yeah. Dude, that's the way those sound? Yep. Is that intimidating? Yeah, <laughs> you it's need a step a stool, Grandpa. Bike. It's a it's a 75 horsepower bike. You know, it's not crazy fast. Or <laughs> All the way up. <laughs> he got them long legs. Look at his legs on that bike. Dude. <laughs> legs are folded up around his ears. I know. It's like he's riding a tricycle. Posting. Oh, oh, great, great. What'd you think? 
Hey. It still hurts my hands though. It's a sport bike, yeah. Yeah. Because of the. It doesn't smell. <laughs> Drop the bike. You want to ride again? I do not. You don't want to ride? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Dude, it's been 30 years since I've written anything. This car, right here. Whose is it? That's yours? What are you doing? I have to see that. You can't say. It's not driving right now. It's been sitting for too long. Oh, okay. So. I had Archer Racing up in Minnesota build that for me. Uh -huh. It's got a $35,000 engine in it. Uh, I built it for rally racing. It's putting down 680 horsepower to all four wheels. 730 at the crank. <laughs> It, it's insane. Is that what you you've been taking to that to that to that track you were talking about? No, no, I, this was a while back. I built this thing 15 years ago. Oh wow! Yeah. And but, that's my Accord sitting there because I didn't have room for it at the house. But why Mitsubishi Galant? Like, what is that was the first rally car before Evos existed, before Subaru WRXs. That was World Rally Champion right there. Wow! Production race, production class race. Nice. anything with Baja boost you know what I'm saying yeah, man. <laughs> it's that button on the left side the big red button the one that he didn't tell you about <laughs> yeah all right let's do it uh, quasi tart on the Chiquita banana Riker 600 <laughs> I'm gonna get off of it and these mirrors are gonna be gone dude. <laughs> I'm gonna have them in my pockets uh, you know how to put it in sport mode I'm just, I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Uh, so yeah, fire it up. And then hold down sport mode. Uh oh. Rally just reduces the rear traction a little bit more, but it's not that great. Rally is more of a gimmick. Sport mode gives a, it gives you a better uh, throttle response. Already. So a lot of goofing around, a lot of riding on Quasi's toys, and of course, a lot of fun. So at this point, as you can tell, we've swapped Rikers. So you got Quasi on the Chiquita Banana, and then 600, and then myself on his Riker Rally, the famous Quasimodo Riker Rally. So, and I'm having a blast. I've actually never even ridden a rally until this time here, uh, at this point of the universe youtube universe timeline uh and i'm having a blast uh you know just riding around with the guys is always a blast but it's cool to swap like this so dude it's like night and day i feel bad it's like i get to drive this cool thing back and you're driving like this trash can dude oh, it's actually fun. I Well, hey, that might be doing. I don't know how that is. So. When you get on the group payment up here, this will wander around. Okay, I'll check it out. Quasi Motar, the local celebrity, signing autographs. Look at your boy, dude. Yeah, we were having fun. And like I was, I was telling him just then, I was like, man, as I was riding, and I was like, man, I feel bad he's riding that little 600. It barely had anything on it at that point. At least I had the two front uh elka shocks on it at that point so it wasn't too bad for him not completely stock on the 600 in but man uh wow that, that was a blast like i said i know it's a long video it's me vibing with quasi there on the way um back to his crib and we head out we head out that same day it was a quick day trip um had a lot of fun like i said check his channel out he's got more way more info on there and more than i'll probably ever be able to do in the next couple years so check him out follow them subscribe i know you already do or you wouldn't even know who i am i'm at the bottom i'm at the bottom compared to these guys but thanks for watching i appreciate it um more videos to come it gets his one minute to shine and you can't see him behind